please welcome to the stage Neil Gaiman. So I was just 16. It was Easter, 1977, and it was seven o'clock in the morning, and my train had pulled in from the ferry from Harwich in the south of England to Liverpool Street Station in the far east end of London. And I got off on my own, looking for my parents, who were going to pick me up and take me home. And they were late. They weren't there. And I wasn't really surprised by this, because my parents were late. I had the kind of parents who were late. That's what they were. <laughs> I don't know how you went to school. I went to school by getting up, going, oh my God, is that the time? <laughs> Leaping in the car, and my father would say, we'll go the quick way. <laughs> and the school, which was about 11 miles away, we would go the quick way which involved driving down tiny country lanes where only one car could go round hairpin turns at 70 miles an hour, which would get me to school only three or four minutes late. So it's seven o'clock in the morning, and my parents are late, and I'm on Liverpool Street Station, which is a fairly long way away from Victoria Station, which is a fairly long way away from Sussex, where I lived in the south. And I'm not worried, and I go, and I wait. And every now and then I look up and see if my parents are there. They're not. I'm not worried. We were early once. It was about a couple of years earlier. Um, it was actually April the 1st, and we drove to the house of Robert Leeson, who lived in the same town, and some weeks I'd take him to school, and some weeks he'd take me to school, and we drove to his house, and he was always waiting impatiently out at the end of the drive, but he wasn't there. So we got out, and we rang the doorbell, and after a while, somebody leaned out from an upstairs window and told us that it was four o'clock in the morning and please, would we go away? <laughs> and it turned out my sister, as an April Fool's joke, could put all the clocks in the house four hours early. <laughs> so that was the only time that we were ever actually early. <laughs> so I wait on the platform with my, my suitcase, and I read my book. I had been in Hamburg, in Germany, and I should have come back with lots and lots and lots of friends a week earlier. Um, I had to go to Hamburg as part of a German exchange. I'd been in a play in Antigone, a Greek play, which the headmaster had decided had to be performed once in Greek and once in English and I was a messenger in the English version. And so I'd gone out a week after everybody else to Hamburg, and uh, I'd had a really interesting time. I now had, I had a passport, which was kind of exciting. It had a photograph of me looking very nervous in my school tie, staring like this, but it was my passport, and I, had my first girlfriend. I'd met a girl in Hamburg. She was English. A girl's school had also gone out there. And I'd been informed by my friend, Baggy Wilson. His real name was Simon. Um, but his nickname was Baggy. 
and then very rapidly after that it became Simon, don't call me Baggy Wilson, which is actually a worse nickname to have than Baggy Wilson. Is Simon, don't call me Baggy Wilson. Um, had told me that he'd already called dibs on her, but he hadn't mentioned this to her. And she called dibs on me. And I felt so incredibly grown up. And now I was sitting on Liverpool Street Station and time was ticking away. And now it was lunchtime. And I was getting hungry. And my parents still weren't there. And I didn't have any money because glorying in my newfound adulthood, I had bought cigarettes, an entire carton of cigarettes, <laughs> on the ferry home from Hamburg, using up the last of my money. So I sat and smoked cigarettes. I hadn't quite got the hang of it, but I did. I thought about phoning home and did, no answer. Phoned my dad's office, no answer. Started nervously making collect calls to every phone number I could remember. <laughs> no answer. I'm starting to get worried. I decide it's probably my own fault for the problem with the five pence pieces. Um, we'd gone, all of us kids, to some little town on the border with East Germany where they hadn't seen any English people since 1945. <laughs> Two days later, we found ourselves in the English consulate in Hamburg where they pointed out to us that seeing that they hadn't seen any English people except the liberating English army and us in the last 30 years, the fact that all of their cigarette machines and chocolate machines were now filled with English five pence pieces, which were worth a quarter of a mark but worked just as well, <laughs> meant that they were pretty damn sure it was us. This also meant that I had no English change to use in the chocolate machines on the station, so I'm really starting to get hungry. And I'm really starting to get nervous because this is Liverpool Street Station. It's 30 years ago. It was a fairly rough, fairly nasty station, and fairly rough, fairly nasty people kept looking at me. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, and. Only a week ago, I'd been an adult with my own passport and a girlfriend and cigarettes, and now I was Paddington Bear. <laughs> so, I'd watch as people would circle me and eye me and move away. Little old Chinese man came and sat down next to me, pulled out a packet of capstan full-strength cigarettes, possibly the scariest cigarettes ever created in the history of the human race, and offered me one. You want a cigarette, boy? I said, no, thank you. He said, you want to come back to my fight with me? I said, no. He said, I've got apples. It's four o'clock in the afternoon. My parents are the latest they've ever been. It's still not entirely beyond the bounds of possibility that they're late. Um, <laughs> I was once ill, I had measles, and they took me back to school the day that I recovered from measles and dropped me off and I got out. 
and the school was locked. And eventually I found a nice groundsman who told me this was half term. <laughs> but that time they phoned my parents and they took me away. I am desperately phoning every number I know and finally one gets answered and it is my cousin Lee down in Sussex and I say Lee I'm, I'm on Liverpool Street Station and she says well, why are you there and I said well I'm, I just came back from Germany I have no money I don't know what to do I, 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 I where are my mum and dad she says oh they've gone on holiday I said, what? <laughs> she said, well, it was Easter. They took your sister on a skiing holiday in Austria. It was a sort of spur of the moment thing. <laughs> I said, what about me? She said, what about you? Why don't you come home? I said, I have no money. She said, why not? I said, I bought cigarettes. <laughs> she said, it's your own bloody fault. <laughs> I said, I have to get home. She said, Stay there. I said, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> and everywhere I go, I have to haul a suitcase with me. I sit down on the station. I have smoked as many cigarettes by now on that one day as I had smoked previously in my entire life. <laughs> At five o'clock, there is an announcement over the tannoy. Will Neil Gaiman please come to the station master's office? I go up to the station master's office. My aunt Rhoda, Lee's mother, is on the phone. She had come home from work. Lee had explained my predicament. She said, it's your own stupid fault. <laughs> I said, what do I do? She said, hang on, put the station master back on. I give him the phone back. They talk for a while. She says, all right, I've paid your ticket from Victoria Station, in the south of London, down to Sussex. I said, okay. She said, there's only one problem. I said, what's that? And then I realize what that is. I say, I have to get to Victoria, don't I? She says, yes. At that point, back these days, you can buy tickets that will take you all through London Underground and stuff, but not then. Then the tube system didn't talk to the railway services. I said, what do I do? She said, show them your passport. I said, what? She said, well, what can they say? I said, I don't know. But I had to find out. I got my suitcase and I marched down to the underground and I showed them my passport. They didn't know what to do. They let me on the tube. <laughs> I changed tubes several times. Each time I had to change, I'd show them my passport. <laughs> They'd write down my name and address. Eventually, I got to Victoria. I got on the train, and an hour later, I got off, and there's my aunt, waiting rather nervously for me. And I'd been an adult, and then I'd been a kid, and now I wasn't sure what I was. But I knew that I was 16, and I knew that it was a really good thing to have a passport. Thank you. <laughs> Neil Gaiman.